Now, as I said before on that one, been having fuel pump problems. I've been I've been having problems with it leaning leaning out. Actually, when it shouldn't. Um, the sixty pound injectors they actually should have went farther. I know the calculators videos that I showed. I mean, they get you in the ballpark, but usually they're conservative. But um, and then the eighty pound injectors they should have went farther. Um, so I had a wiring issue in my tank and I'm actually kind of wondering, I mean, what are the odds that I put that in one of the videos, I put one of those Speedmaster fuel pressure regulators on and it would only read 20, no matter how much I adjusted it in or out. I'm wondering, I mean, what are the odds? I took it right back off and put the other one back on and it, it read 50 PSI. I don't know. It's possible that short could have caused that. But uh, let me show you what the stock sending unit looks like. So on the stock sending unit, you got these 14 gauge wires. Well, most of them. This, this, I don't know what color that is. A gray. No. This gray one, it goes to the power for the fuel pump. This ground is the ground for the fuel pump and the sending unit. And then this purple one is the power for the sending unit. So what they do is they go through this bulkhead connector. And you can take that bulkhead connector off, but you have to take that plastic clip off. Well, first you have to take this off. And this pops off. It comes all the way up and grabs it up here. So you either have to push in on that. You got to take this out first, this orange thing. And you push in on that, and this will slide off. And then, you can take this off. But if you take it off, see, it's kind of made to where it, it stays on by gouging into that. But you can pry that off, but if you pry it off, you pretty much ruined it. But anyway, the purple wire, see how these, these are, these are like 14, 16 gauge wires. And then when it comes into the tank, I'm just guessing here, but that's like a 20 gauge wire. <laughs> These are probably 18, 16 to 18. But anyway, the ground wire first comes down to the sending unit. And it's a little wire. I'd say that one's an 18 gauge. And then... It goes from the sending unit to the pump. This is where the pump would have plugged in. This one don't got a pump on it. Long time ago, I was having problems with my my sender reading. It always showed maxed out, but there was a ground under the car that was causing that. But that's a different story. But anyway, and then the gray, that's your gray or, I guess that's gray, but it just got dirty up here. But anyway. That's the power for the pump. I'd say that's a, that's probably a 16 gauge wire. That's probably a 16 gauge wire too, but 16 to 18, I'd say. But they're 14 up here. I've already cut into one and spliced it. They were 14 on the, on the crimp, on the, you know, the little tool that, that shaves them off. So you can, yeah, anyway. So I didn't like the way it did this on the ground side, and I had it had come loose right here, just like there was a short right there. And you know, I knew there was probably something like this causing it, but when it looked, that one's even loose. Look at that; that one's even loose. I bet if I took that off or I'd pour it out there. That might just be the thing moving inside there. I don't know. But anyway, I had a short right there. And I knew I probably had a problem like that. And when they're intermediate like this, it is almost impossible to find them. It's almost impossible. So I'm glad it completely failed and I figured it out. But the pump just quit working. And I just came in here and I used my multimeter and started omen until I found out where it was and it was right there on mine so 
And I know this looks crude, guys, but it's cool. <laughs> It'll work. So what I did, you can buy these kits when you buy fuel pumps. Well, this, this kit with the wires on it. So I ran these wires directly up here to the power and the ground. And then uh, the ground off the sending unit, I kind of merged those together in this one. And, um, and then the power for the sending unit right there. And uh, I used some zip, really small zip ties and kind of wedged them up in that hole. So none of the wires are touching the case of the sending unit itself. You know, you don't want that because jarring around, I could eventually cut a hole in it. And then I just put a bunch of the Ultra Permatex up there. I'm going to let it dry for a hole. And I've already did this. And the pump quit again. But it was my fault. <laughs> I got in here and started oming stuff out again. And I didn't have no ground. So I use these little solder connectors. They got like solder in the middle of them. Right there. And then they hold the wire on each end. Now, you got to make sure you get both wires inside that solder. Solder, whatever you want to call it. I did not do that on the ground wire. It's kind of hard to hold those and heat them and keep them from popping out all at the same time. But this one, I did not get all the way up in there. And it kind of backed out on me when I, saw it, when I heated it up. So... Once it got, the ground got a little hot, it broke loose. But now, I think I got it pretty good now. Yeah. There's the wire from the sending unit at the top, the wire from the pump at the bottom, and the wiring comes all the way over to the left. I kind of messed this wire coming up in, but it hits up in, and they're all looped together. <clears throat> But yeah, you're going to have to let this dry for 24 hours. Hopefully, my la I, left, I left my laptop out on top of the car the other day. I just forgot it up there. I don't know why I forgot it, but I've, I've never forgot my laptop on or in the car. I always put it up. For some reason, I forgot it on top of the car. It rained all day, and it rained all night, and it rained on my laptop. So hopefully my laptop's not ruined because I had everything in there. I had the tune for this car in there. I had the program for this car in there. I had the tunes for that car in there. The HP tuners, all that I had on there. So hopefully it didn't. But uh, one of my last videos, and I'm going to go back in there and comment on that. I gave y'all some misinformation. So on the blow-off valve on that car, they sent me two springs. And um, on the blow off valve, when I started, I put, I just put it on there and started the car, and the blow off valve opened. So I thought they're supposed to open when you're not under boost at idle. Not supposed to open <laughs> at idle, and um, yeah, they're supposed to stay shut. Um, you're supposed to get a spring right around a little bit higher than the HG IN HG of vacuum that you have. So uh, what happens, they stay shut. And then when you get into boost, you got boost pushing on that and helping it cl stay closed. Then when you let off the gas and the car idles down or, you know, comes down, whoa, you know, that's when you're going to have your most vacuum. Then you're going to have a bunch of boost pressure. So you got the vacuum and a bunch of boost pressure and, psh, and it opens up and psh, sprays it all out. And then um, when it gets back to idle and the regular vacuum at idle, then it shuts again. So I usually research stuff and try to tell you all the, if I don't know the answer. But this boost stuff, this is new to me. We've already ran nitrous. Not very familiar with the boost stuff. So we're just learning this stuff. If I say something wrong, y'all correct me, please. Um, um, but yeah, I put the blow off valve on and I thought they were supposed to open it idle because that one opened it idle. But anyway, I've changed the spring on that one where it don't open it idle now. And uh, actually, both of these cars idle it around. This one idles around actually 8 to 10 
INHG, a vacuum. That one idles around 10 to, 10 to 12. That one's a little bit higher, but it ain't much on one or two. So we need, um, we need the 12 to 15 pound springs. So we went ahead and ordered those, but <laughs> the springs that are in them, Chris's didn't open until about 20. And the big spring they sent me for that one didn't open until about 25. So we ordered the 12 to 15 um, INHG springs um, because that, the Camaro's got, I don't know, 10 to 12. This one, Trans Am's got, when you first started it up, it was like 8. When it warmed up, it got up to like 10 or 11. But if that ain't right, you guys, please correct me. But anyway, hopefully the laptop... <laughs> dries out and starts working and uh, we'll put that back in I think now I was having a problem tuning the 142 pound inject they kept wanting to refat it idle but now that that blow off valve shut it idle it's going to help lean that out but I, I did figure that out that was a that was a little bit of a headache I had to because Snake Eater only sends you like three bits of information to put in that fuel injection, fuel injection thing on HP tuners, and um, I found one of the sloppy tunes files online and filled the rest. That he was using a PL1 ECM and the um, and those injectors, and I filled the rest of it in with that. And I tried it, and it it was it was actually working good. But now that I got that blow off valve closed at idle, that's going to change that. And that might even help make more boost. And maybe it was leaking a little bit because it should have got more than eight pounds of boost with that seven pound spring, but we'll see. But I'm kind of stuck in the water right now on both of these cars. I can't load the tune in neither one of them without that laptop. All right, this is all dry. And that ain't going nowhere and it ain't gonna leak any. But I've been thinking this is just a uh, temporary solution. Um, when I do the surge tank, we're going to put that in one day. I'm going to buy the aftermarket one that's got the AM fittings on it. All right, it's back in. I got to go into the car and plug some stuff up, and then we'll see if it starts. All right, plugged everything on under the car. That harness that comes out of there goes under the car and plugs in right back here behind the tire see what we got well we got a dead battery so I'm trying to start it with the fuel pump wasn't working but we got fuel pressure well since that's charging I'm gonna try a different tune now that I've got that uh, little valve closed it out well I gotta download the driver for the USB port. Dang it. Let's see if it starts. tune I put in last it does not like it well it found the driver automatically and told me a note over there so I'm trying to resync it but I don't think I got enough service out here to do that Let's try it again yeah, there it goes sweet let's try this right again
All right, I tried that other tune because I knew it was fat at idle, but I thought my blow-off valve was coming open at idle. It had too loud of a spring in it. I thought I'm putting a bigger spring in that and closing that would have leaned it out some, but apparently not. this video. Y'all have a good one.